At the end of the 1970s, the world was in turmoil. Never before were so many millions of demonstrators calling for a better life. Millions of them were shouting, fighting and dreaming of more democracy, more freedom, better salaries and of world peace. And everywhere on the planet, women were demanding equal rights. But all these hopes felt trivial in a world chained to the ongoing glacial confrontation between the USA and the USSR. Other than the Soviet or American systems, the besieged populations had no political alternatives. Cold War shackled the world. Since the beginning of the decade, Western powers had been experiencing the first oil shock, the slowdown of their economies, and an unstoppable increase of unemployment. The post-war model was faltering. In England, James Callaghan's Labour government was not only strangled by its obligations towards the International Monetary Fund, but also by unprecedented and seemingly unstoppable strikes that were paralysing the entire country. In Poland, the country was still under Soviet rule and still marked by the bloody failure of the 1970 protest movement and crippling economic slowdown. But the people had been holding their breaths since the election of Polish Cardinal Karol Wojtyla as the new Pope. In China, exhausted after 30 years of oppressive Maoist rule, a few days before the end of 1978, the Communist Party entrusted the fate of the country to Deng Xiaoping, a small man already in his 70s. In Iran, the fierce and westernized dictatorship of the Shah was under huge pressure from demonstrations that had turned into a revolt. Although American President Jimmy Carter saw Iran as an island of stability, hundreds of thousands of Iranians were challenging the security forces and the army in the streets of Tehran, demanding the end of the Shah's dictatorship and a return to democracy. The world was as ready to enter the year 1979 as a tinderbox ready to light up. Yet the four leaders of the most important Western nations were seemingly unimpressed by all the misery of their time and met on the sunny beaches of the French island of Guadeloupe. They were unaware that their quarters were only a few kilometers away from a smoldering volcano fittingly named La Soufrière, the tinderbox.